Hi, Forby. Lodge and call us from the Mascarene Islands. Arcanto Phoenix Alexandre. It's the Mule Palm, an intergenetic hybrid. Phoenix Sylvestris, otherwise known as the Silver Date Palm or the Indian Date Palm. Two Bismarckian Nobilis, native to Madagascar. Good morning, David at Earthworks for another uh, Palm video. Just wanted to show you uh, Piggyback Transport LLC. He delivered uh, our load of palm trees this morning. This is uh, High Forby. Lodge and call us from the Mascarene Island. It's kind of like a dwarf palm. Uh, it only carries about four to six fronds at a time. And it's really unique. It's like a bonsai. Once these leaf bases, the boots come off, you'll really see the taper of the bottle. It kind of has a bottle neck and then the bottle base. Um, they grow to about maybe 15 feet. And once they kind of get some age to them and get older, they kind of lose their their bottle configuration, they're more linear. Um, but they can grow here in an extremely protected microclimate. Uh, I wouldn't recommend them being exposed to temperatures much less than 31 or 30 degrees because the foliage will burn. Uh, I have one, I left it out the last two winters, of course, 33 last year, uh, this past winter, and right around freezing, but I have it under a canopy of a Phoenix Sylvester, so it keeps the frost off, but she's still growing. She's probably two-thirds this size. Arcanto Phoenix Alexandre. I did a video about a month and a half ago. These are a little smaller, uh, native to the land down under Australia, from Queensland to New South Wales. Uh, they're moderate to fast growers, hardy to about zone 9B, which is minimum temperature of 25. We have them in singles, double, and triple trunks coming off today's shipment. These are considered uh, ball and burlap, otherwise known as uh, fill grown in the ground in the tree farm. And they're root pruned every several months, so they regenerate roots and they don't shock as much when they're dug and shipped to us. At times, these trunks can be somewhat slick, so we have to double and triple strap them. And you don't want to go too high because you could potentially damage the crown shaft. And we want to keep the uh, palm leaning away from the metal attachments in the boom so it doesn't scar up the, the trunk, crown shaft, or break any of the petioles and leaves. You can see these bamboo combs, cut pieces. What that's attached for is to protect the trunk and particularly the crown from getting crown collapsed because the weight of the crown and fronds are really long and with shipping and 45 degree angles, they can uh, have a lot of weight distributed on the crown and it could damage them. So that's why the bamboo stilts or crutches are here. Now this is also a self-cleaning palm like I showed in the first uh, King Palm video a month and a half ago. When the frond is expired and ready to go, it will obviously turn yellow brown and then this will split down the crown and it'll just peel off itself or you can accelerate it but you just got to be careful that you don't pull down and you don't want to pull the fibers down into the hard wood because it'll leave a lasting scar and damage it. Very glad to see we received the way overdue necessary precipitation rainfall. Uh, three and a half inches yesterday recording at my, recorded at my house and probably about the same here but we were in a drought the last day of measurable precipitation was on Thursday April 30th which April was great it was above average uh, over six inches of rain that month. Usually April and May are the two driest months in Jacksonville in Northeast Florida in the beaches area uh, when it's most critical because everything, spring, pollen and trees and wildlife and nature are waking up and usually we're dry and we were dry for 25 days, May 1st through the 24th and then we got the rain that began on Memorial Day, May 25th and three and a half inches yesterday and a little bit this morning. It was like a desert back here prior to that. And all new palms, even though they're drought tolerant, any palm needs an essential amount of uh, water initially. When we plant them, we'll build a moat or dirt berm. You fill that up sometimes every day, sometimes every other day, even though it's a drought tolerant palm to get the roots to grow out and 
stop the transpiration from the trunk, petioles, and leaves. This is the mule palm, an intergenetic hybrid. Mother is the Butia capitata, otherwise known as the pindo palm. And the father pollen comes from the Cyagris Roman Zafiana, the queen palm. I've done a couple videos most recently, shot a video about a month ago on the differences of genetic expressions. This one is diamond cut. As you can see, it's showing the genetic color in the leaf bases. You've got peach, gray, that really unique burgundy, merlot hue, and a little bit of green. And up she goes. Looks like a uh, coconut palm, which is hardy for North Florida. I've got a customer that's been coming down buying trees from me since 1999, 21 years when I worked at another palm garden center. Uh, he followed me over here and uh, they've been growing in Savannah area for 21 years, so they're cold hardy. Here I have a Beccario Phoenix Alfredii, otherwise known as a high plateau coconut palm. Shot a video in 2019 on this one. Grows in elevations of 3,000 to 4,000 feet in the island of Madagascar. The fruit of the palm is a staple food source for the native Lemur. These can be tricky, so I have to strap it kind of low because it has petioles that are slippy. Another great palm for North Florida. Minimum 9, 8, 20 degrees. does not produce the coconuts like the Cocos nucifera, the tropical coconut palm, so please don't get confused about that. But it is a great palm for here. The fruit's about the size of maybe a large golf ball or small grapefruit or tangerine. Native to the Middle East, Pakistan, India, uh, and its native habitat. They tap into the trunk, unfortunately it kills the palm and they make a toddy or wine. I gotta restrap this. Anyway, they tap into the trunk in India and they make a jaggery or toddy, which is a wine. In Indian terms, it's kajuri, K-H-A-J-U-R-I. It's the sugary sap from the palm that they make a, a wine, uh, alcoholic beverage from. And this palm being from the Middle East and India where it's kind of somewhat in a dry climate, it doesn't seem to mind at all our 55 to 60 inch per year annual rainfall total and our high humidity, which by the way is starting to kick in now. Everyone's always attracted to the color of these trunks. Nothing unnatural about it. Uh, the leaf bases in the tree farm are left on with a full nearly full crown of leaves on the entire tree, especially this size. So they're preserved, so when they are sold, transplanted, you know, dug up and transplanted to us, this is preserved and it's fresh. It's kind of like a wound when you, uh, no matter what skin color you are, when you get a wound in the scab or you get a laceration, it's white and tender under there. Think of it like that in palm terms. Uh, this will turn from white to orange and then orange to cinnamon brown, so It'll change. They became popular in 2003 in the nursery trade about 17 years ago and hit the palm nursery sale trade by storm. Uh, everybody wanted them. They were high demand. Uh, they've been planted on the interstates, on I-4, on exit and entrance ramps, just, just beautiful. But one important aspect I must mention is there's a was formerly called Texas Phoenix Palm Decline. It came in through the port of Tampa somewhere around 2005 or so. It's a, uh, a, a virus that is spread by a uh, leaf hopper. Uh, what it does is it's a carrier for it. It's not the actual leaf hopper itself. It bites into the flesh, leaf, trunk, what have you, and it uh, transmits the virus. and. Uh, and now it's been called lethal bronzing. It starts from the bottom up. It may have symptoms from up to a year and you don't notice it. Uh, but really important to sterilize your pruning shears from palm to palm with an alcohol or bleach to prevent this. What we have here are two Bismarckian nobilis, a native to Madagascar. A big striking palm, also one planted on the I-4 and I-95 interstate for uh, 
visitors to Florida to show how diverse our palm growing is here. This is Carl. He uh, recently went on a vacation to the island of Antigua and made a little video of Bismarck's in the background on a roadway and he said, David, these Bismarck's are Antigua, they're everywhere. The palms remind me of David and he sent me a little video. This is Carl here. Crazy Carl, Hurricane Carl. Also another cold hardy palm. Uh, this can actually grow up into coastal Georgia, Savannah. Mr. Colbreth, my customer that's been buying from us for 21 years actually has one and it's alive to today. So I think he's gotten 17 or 19 degrees as a minimum temperature, but he has an oak and native hardwood canopy there. So that acts as a insulator, keeps the frost off a little microclimate, breaks up those piercing northwest winds when the frontal passage, cold frontal passage comes through. By the way, microclimate is planting a palm up against a fence under a canopy structure near a body of water, river, lake, ocean, and southeast side of the house. It creates a microclimate. Or even decorative lights to keep the temperature up when the temperatures are below freezing. Once again, Piggyback Transport LLC will transport palms, hay, any agriculture products throughout the state of Florida. We're thankful that he was here today to deliver our trees, so kudos to him.